The Life of Granola, Dragon Ball Granola is the sole survivor of the Serialian race that was annihilated by the Saiyan army and a bounty hunter employed by the Heaters. Motivated by his desire for revenge, he seeks to gain more power to kill the tyrant Frieza and avenge his people. He's one of the main characters of the Granola the Survivor Saga, initially acting as the antagonistic foe towards Goku and Vegeta. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Granola. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Many decades ago, Granola lived on Serial with his people, the Serialians, and a tribe of Namekians. One day, the Serialian homeworld was attacked and conquered by the Frieza Force and its Saiyan army. Using the full moon, the Saiyans transformed into great apes and annihilated nearly all of the population and their cities. With the help of his people, a young and frightened Granola ran inside of an abandoned building to hide with his mother, Musili, which I hope I'm not mispronouncing because I actually checked for the pronunciation this time. Anyway, uh, he hid with his mother, Musli, only to be discovered by a great ape with a scar on its face. The sight of a great ape caused the frightened Granola to faint. Desperate, the Serialians destroyed their moon, causing the great apes to revert back to normal. Although, even without the full moon, the Saiyans were more than powerful enough to wipe out the Serialians. Bardock, having reverted as well, approached Granola and his mother inside the building. Musli, frightened, shoots one of Bardock's shoulder guards off as a warning. Suddenly, Leek calls out to Bardock from outside. Leek says they've completed their mission and must leave. Bardock tells Leek to go without him as he'll look for survivors, not informing him about Granola and Musli. Leek complies but tells him to hurry as Frieza will arrive shortly. Using his scouter, Bardock determines that these are the last two Serialians and detects another survivor in the mountains. Bardock takes the two to the survivor's location. The only remaining Namekian, Monaito, senses Bardock and attempts to attack him, only to be easily thwarted by the Saiyan. Monaito calms down when he sees two Serialians with him. Musli asks Monaito for shelter, which he happily accepts. Bardock tells them to stay hidden and lie low, as Frieza is on his way to Serial. Monaito suspects a ploy, but Bardock says he saved them because he felt like it. Bardock tells them to survive for as long as they can and leaves. Before he goes, Monaito asks for his name and treats his arm with healing. Suddenly, Bardock detects someone with his scouter and discovers the heaters in the distance. Bardock, Monaito, and Musli listen to the heaters discuss their plan to scam the Shigarians and usurp Frieza one day. Suddenly, Granola wakes up and screams when he sees Bardock, alerting the heaters. Monaito quickly uses a ki to knock Granola out. Bardock takes Monaito's cloak to hide his face and takes aim at them, pretending he found some survivors to kill. Elect tells him to get on with it, but Bardock says the Namekian has a strange power worth checking into. Elect quickly draws his gun and shoots Musli in the chest, killing her. He orders Bardock to kill the kid and the Namekian. Bardock attacks the heaters with an invisible blast, but gas blocks it with a force field. Using the smoke as distraction, Bardock makes a quick getaway with the others. Monaito laments that his power can't save Musli. Bardock says the heaters will come looking for them to prevent their secret from getting out. Elect sends Gas to find and kill them. However, Bardock somehow managed to defeat or evade Gas long enough to escape. Without his mother, Granola would be raised by Monaito. Not wanting to burden Granola by revealing that he inadvertently caused his own mother's death, Monaito lied to the Serialian and never told him that Bardock saved their lives or their encounter with the heaters. The young Serialian survived the genocide of his race, but the experience left him haunted with nightmares that lasted into adulthood. This instilled Granola with an obsessive desire for revenge against Frieza and the Saiyans, to such an extent that he deliberately chose a house in the mountains where he could view the remains of his hometown as a reminder of his past. At some point in his life, Granola made an acquaintance with an individual named Oatmeal, and started an occupation as a bounty hunter before he was approached by Elek and Gas, who hired him. He began working under the heaters, taking jobs in order to make a living. Ironically, the Frieza Force made a deal with the heaters to ravage Serial so the heaters could rebuild the planet and sell it to the highest bidder, a fact that Granola remains ignorant to. Granola the Survivor Saga Granola's most recent job involves the pursuit and capture of Goichi's OG soldier OG-73I, which heaters leader Elect plans to use for intel. With Oatmeal's help, Granola tracks down Goichi's ship to a remote corner of the universe far from Earth to find OG-73I. As he boards Goichi's ship, Oatmeal warns Granola to be careful, as they don't know how many enemies are on board. Granola understands and asks Oatmeal to prepare to provide him support. Goichi is quickly alerted by Granola's intrusion and sends his guards after him, but Granola easily defeats the guards by shocking them with his stun gun and continues into the ship. In desperation, Goichi activates all of his OG soldiers, all having received copies of 7-3's data and thus possess equivalent capabilities, to dispatch him. 
Granola asks Oatmeal to run a scan and find out which OG unit is their target. Oatmeal informs Granola that none of the OG soldiers who approach them are the target, so Granola defeats them all by shooting finger beams at the crystals in their heads. After making his way to a room full of OG soldiers, Oatmeal informs Granola that 7-3 is the OG soldier inside of a medical machine in the center. This causes Granola to crack a smile. After taking 7-3, Granola heavily damaged Goichi's ship, preventing them from following his ship. Later, Granola wakes up screaming, terrified from a nightmare of his race's destruction. Oatmeal asks Granola if he had that dream again, and Granola confirms. He hastily checks on 7-3 and asks if they've been followed, but Oatmeal reassures him that the android is in stable condition and that Goichi and his followers couldn't follow them after the destruction he caused on their ship. Oatmeal says that it'll take a while to reach the heater's base and suggests that Granola goes into cold sleep, a form of suspended animation, but he declines, insisting that he is wide awake now. Oatmeal asks if he still despises the Frieza Force and Granola says he does. Oatmeal says that Frieza died several years ago and the remnants of his army are but a shadow of their former glory, but they can't understand why Granola is still obsessed and insists that he move on. Granola says that he should try since it was the apes in Frieza's army that slaughtered his fellow Serialians and apparently they were wiped out by a giant meteor shortly afterwards, unaware that this was a lie fabricated by Frieza. Granola says that he lost both the targets for his revenge, but can't understand why he's still plagued with nightmares. Oatmeal asks if he's referring to the Saiyans, and Granola confirms it. After a long journey, Granola arrives at the heater's base and hauls 7-3 into the fortress. Another bounty hunter, Soshiru, greets Granola after seeing him carry in his target, but the Serialian ignores him. Soshiru recognizes 7-3 as the artificial life form that Elect wants and inquires how he captured him. The greedy bounty hunter suggests they pretend that they captured 7-3 together and split the prize, as his previous target didn't make him much money, while eagerly examining the android. Irritated, Granola points his finger at Soshiro's head and warns him not to touch 7-3, otherwise he'll give his head to Alak for payment. Soshiro hastily replies that he was joking and Granola continues inside. In Alak's throne room, Granola offers 7-3 to the heaters. Alak asks Oil to confirm it and after examination, he replies that it is indeed 7-3, Elect congratulates Granola, but the Serialian demands his payment. Maki gives Granola a bag full of their currency. Granola asks Elect if he will create an army using 7-3 like Goichi. Elect laughs and says he has no need for soldiers because the heaters don't command armies, and if they did need more numbers, they'll simply hire the best soldiers that money can buy. Elect claims that with enough money, there's nothing you can't have, which Granola agrees with. Elect claims that real power comes from money and intel, and the one with the most information controls the universe, and 7-3 is full of useful information. Granola says that he only cares about his reward and asks for another assignment. Elect says that they don't have any assignments at the moment because the state of the universe is shifting due to Frieza's resurrection. Shocked, Granola asks how this is possible, but Elect has no idea. Elect says that the Frieza Force's return is bad for business, as people will become frightened and less willing to make deals. Elated, Granola believes that this is his chance to avenge his people and desperately demands for Frieza's location so he can kill the tyrant. Elect tells him not to bother as Frieza had come back far stronger than before, leading Granola to march up to his throne before Gas pins him down. Elect says that Granola is hot-headed and knows about his grudge against the Frieza Force, but revenge requires time and planning. Elect tells Granola to wait until they're ready to help him as the Frieza Force is their common enemy. Granola begrudgingly agrees and Elect tells Gas to let him go. While the Serialian gathers his money, Elect tells him to go home and calm down. Before leaving, Granola asks that they contact him if there's another job. Outside, Oatmeal asks Granola to explain himself, as he doesn't usually let Elect get the last word. Granola angrily curses Frieza and vows to exact his revenge by personally killing the tyrant. Oatmeal insists that he remain calm and suggests that he treat himself with his earnings. Unbeknownst to Granola, the heaters have become wary of his ever-growing strength and plan to have him killed by Frieza. In their ship, Oatmeal tells Granola to rest up as it'll take two days to reach Serial. Suddenly, Granola hears a loud noise and turns to find Soshiru, who gathered his allies to rob him of his bounty. Granola lands his ship on a nearby asteroid to hide from his pursuers. However, the bounty hunters follow him and search his ship. He lures the group to the cockpit by speaking through his eye patch and incapacitates most of Soshiru's allies by sniping them with his stun gun. Soshiru is shocked that Granola can snipe without his goggles, and Oatmeal explains that the Serialian's right eye are especially adapted to sniping, and Granola's abilities are superior to the others. Granola holsters his gun and threatens to kill Soshiru with a finger beam. The bounty hunter surrenders and apologizes, and gives Granola his pocket change, before leaving with his allies. Granola returns to his ship and puts his eye patch back on, with Oatmeal praising his sniping abilities. Granola downplays this, acknowledging that he missed one of Soshiru's men. 
Gurula admits that he isn't strong enough to defeat Frieza and must gain more power than anyone to avenge the Serialian race. After arriving on Serial, Granola lands his ship in a Shigarian city. The Shigarians, or Shigarians, I really don't know how to pronounce that, welcome Granola back and the Serialian asks them to fix the left wing of his ship, which was damaged during his fight with Soshiru. When Shigarian asks Granola when he expects to leave again, but the Serialian says that he won't have any jobs for a while and they can take their time while giving them some of his currency. The Shigarian tells Granola to take some time off for himself and he agrees. Granola goes to a nearby store and buys food and water for himself and Monaito. The clerk asks about the elder Namekian and why he doesn't come into the city anymore. Grunala explains that his leg is giving him trouble because of his advanced age. He also mentions that Monaito is over 500 years old, but his people naturally have long lifespans. The clerk asks why they live alone in the mountains, as the Shigarians would accept them into their city with open arms, but Grunala says that their city wouldn't suit them. Granola takes his food and bids the clerk farewell, but not before the Shigarian offers an extra bottle of water free of charge. Granola accepts, and the clerk tells him to give his regards to Monaito. As Granola walks home through the mountains, Oatmeal asks why he doesn't live amongst the Shigarians. Granola explains that the Heaters built their city for them, so it's not meant for him. Oatmeal confusedly asks if the planet wasn't once home to the Serialians. Granola explains that 40 years ago, after his world was ravaged by the Frieza Force, the Heaters arrived and started rebuilding the planet. The Shigarians originally came from another planet that was destroyed and roamed through space before paying the Heaters to settle on Serial. Granola says that since the Shigarians arrived and made Serial their home, he and Monaito decided to live in the mountains. Oatmeal realizes they distanced themselves in pursuit of amenable cohabitation. Granola adds that he can also see the remains of his hometown from the top of the mountain, and he lives here to constantly remind himself of what the Saiyans did to his planet. After arriving home, Granola meets Monaito and gives him some water. The elder Namekian thanks Granola for being so good to him. While they eat, Granola mentions that their friend at the shop said hi and gave them an extra bottle of water. Monaito says that he hasn't gone into the city in a while and the Shigarians treat them quite nicely. Granola says they probably feel bad about moving onto their planet when they were here first. The Namekian says they shouldn't feel bad as he has no complaints about his current lifestyle. Monaito asks Granola if he has any more jobs, but the Siri alien replies that since Frieza came back to life, the heaters are laying low for now, which means no jobs for him. Monaito asks if the heaters put a bounty on Frieza's head, but Granola replies no, and the heaters aren't eager to mess with the Frieza force. Granola adds that he will take down Frieza and his army, with or without a reward. Monaito is against this, as he isn't strong enough to fight Frieza. Granola says he may have to resort to using the serial Dragon Balls and looks at the one-star ball in their possession. Monaito disagrees and says that the Dragon Balls weren't made to take revenge. Granola understands and says that he would need both Dragon Balls to make a wish anyway. Monaito says that the other one has been lost for 40 years, likely never to be seen again, and Granola says he'd need to search the entire planet for one tiny ball. Monaito tells Granola that the Dragon Balls began as part of a ritual to celebrate brave Namekian warriors, not to fulfill selfish desires, which the Serialian reluctantly accepts. Monaito informs Granola that a tribe of Namekians settled on Serial years ago, but now he is the only remaining member of the tribe, and when he passes away, the Dragon Balls will go with him. Granola suggests that he look for the other Dragon Ball and wish for their planet to be restored to the way it was 50 years ago. Monaita asks what will happen to the kind Shigarians who settled here, since they cannot force them off their new home. Granola says that Frieza and his army must be eliminated then. Monaito denies this again, saying revenge isn't the way, as it'll only lead to more enemies. Granola reluctantly accepts this. Monaito tells him to give up the Dragon Balls and enjoy the hand they've been dealt, before going to sleep. At night, Granola observes the Dragon Ball while his television plays in the background. When the news turns on, the reporter says that a local boy found a strange orb in a crevice while hunting bugs in the mountains. Specialists at the Shigarians Institute say that the orb may not originate from Serial and are currently conducting research on him. Granola immediately recognizes the orb as the two-star ball. Realizing this is his chance to have his wish granted, Granola heads into the city to steal the Dragon Ball. Wearing a mask to hide his face, Granola breaks into the institution and takes the ball before escaping into the mountains as the alarm goes off. Oatmeal asks Granola why he's ignoring the elder's warnings, but Granola says it'll be fine and he has a plan. He remembers that Monaito once told him the password to summon the eternal dragon and asks Oatmeal to remind him how it goes. Granola successfully uses the password to summon the eternal dragon of cereal, Toronbo. The dragon tells Granola that he'll grant any one wish if it's within his power. Oatmeal says Granola doesn't have to state his wish in the Namekian language. Granola tells Toronbo that he wishes to become the strongest warrior in the universe. Toronbo asks Granola if his wish is to make him the strongest warrior in his universe apart from deities. But while Granola is eager to have his wish granted, he's halted when Toronbo tells him that he can make Granola stronger, but not more than his latent potential will allow. 
Despite Granola's disappointment, the dragon then tells him that if he's willing to agree to a certain condition, he can indeed become the strongest. Granola agrees, ready to do whatever it takes to gain the power to bring Frieza down. Taranbo explains the condition. He can multiply the Serialian's current strength by condensing all the power that he could have achieved throughout his lifetime, though this would require a drastic cut in Granola's lifespan, 150 years gone, with only three left. Granola, however, is still dead set on having his wish granted, and thus accepts the condition in full. Upon hearing Granola's agreement, Taranbo grants his wish and dissipates, leaving Granola left with lengthened hair and sparkling bioelectricity. In silence, he reaches towards his left, raising a boulder into the air with his newfound power before detonating it with a clench of his hand, shocking oatmeal. Smirking, he realized the wish worked before being confronted by Monaito, who was woken up by the shockwave. Granola claims his strength is unrivaled and he can bring down Frieza with his new power, but Monaito asks if he's accepted a condition and warns him that said power will only bring new enemies out of the woodwork. The Serialian is still confident though, telling him that as the universe's greatest warrior, he can handle any new threat coming his way. Rising into the air, he attempts to detect Frieza's location, but can't find anything from any nearby planets. So he departs to his ship to pay Alek a visit to find out Frieza's whereabouts, leaving Naito distraught that he's upended Granola's life once more. During the two-day travel, Granola cuts off the lengthened portions of his hair, unaware that he's being observed by Whis, who presumes that Granola's predicament could cause some turmoil. Upon reaching the heater's base, he crashes their entertainment, demanding to know where Frieza is. Elec is unsurprised at what Granola wants, but reminds him that he's nowhere close to Frieza's level. Irritated, Granola claims to now be the strongest in the universe, but Elec waves him off and has Oil try to shoo him out, but is surprised when Granola uses a single tap to send Oil flying into a wall. Having now caught Elec's attention, Granola is forced to fight Oil, but easily outmaneuvers and pummels the brute, sending him crashing through the base floor and disintegrating said chunk of floor with ease when Oil hurls it at him. He's then engaged by Maki, effortlessly dodging her key claws before ensnaring her wrists with his scarf and slamming her into the floor before Gas cuts her free. Before Granola can fight Gas, Elec stops the battle, saying Gas has no need to get involved. Granola is unwilling to explain his newfound power to Elec, but Elec presses further withholding the information about Frieza's whereabouts and claiming that if Granola isn't the real deal and he's beaten by Frieza, the heaters would have targets on their backs. Granola then reveals how he used the cereal in Dragon Balls as well as his life-reducing condition and that he only has three years left on him, leaving the heaters shocked. Elec, in return, tells him that they actually don't exactly know Frieza's location, but that they'll get back to him and he should cool his head while he waits. With nothing else he can currently gain from them, Granola leaves the heaters be and takes off in his ship, unaware of the heaters' new scheme to get rid of Granola. After arriving back on Serial, Granola stays on his ship and waits for Elec to contact him. Oatmeal asks if Manito will be alright on his own, but Granola assures them that he can watch the Elder Namekian with his right eye, which became stronger due to his wish. After several weeks of waiting, Maki contacts an impatient Granola. As part of their plan to eliminate the Serialian, Maki claims that they found Frieza's location, but their scouting squad informed the tyrant that Granola is attempting to assassinate him. She deceives him by further claiming two of Frieza's assassins are en route to Serial to kill him. Granola says this is perfect, as he can interrogate them for Frieza's location. Maki says that the assassins are surviving members of the same race, much to Granola's surprise. Granola looks over the remains of his hometown and says that after 50 years, Revenge will finally be his. The Saiyans' assassins are actually Goku and Vegeta, and the heaters are taking advantage of Granola's grudge against the Saiyan race. After sensing the Saiyans' arrival on Serial, Granola snipes at the Saiyans from the forest. Goku and Vegeta dodge with Ultra Instinct and the Super Saiyan form, respectively, and follow the blasts back to the source. However, Granola uses his incredible speed to move from different positions and continues blasting at the same duo, before successfully shooting Goku in the neck, rendering him unconscious. Vegeta quickly goes to Goku's side and revives his comrade with a Sensu Bean. Goku proceeds to turn into a Super Saiyan as well and blasts at Granola, who swiftly vanishes and reappears behind the duo. Goku comments that his movement technique is even faster than instant transmission. Granola says that it's just one of the many nameless techniques he gained as a result of his wish to become Universe 7's strongest warrior. Granola introduces himself as the last member of the Serialian race, however Goku and Vegeta state that they've never heard of his race. Granola coldly states that he knows all too much about their kind. Vegeta asks if he holds a grudge against the Saiyans, but Granola refuses to explain and says their race will meet their end here, unaware of other Saiyan survivors Broly and Tarbol, as well as the Saiyan hybrids. The Serialian flies into the air and uses a mysterious technique against them, which devastates the ground. After dodging, Vegeta compares Granola's technique to Hakai. Vegeta agrees to let Goku fight Granola first, once more intending to prove his superiority to Goku in battle. 
Goku faces Granola on the ground and says that they'll fight first, but Sasiri Alien says that facing him alone was a foolish choice and insults the Saiyans. Granola asks if they'll transform into the Great Apes form, but Goku states that they can no longer use that transformation, forgetting to point out that there's no full moon also, and further powers up into a Super Saiyan God. Goku also uses Ultra Instinct to keep up with Granola's assault. However, the Siri Alien once again lands a pressure point attack that cripples Goku and drops him out of his god state. He easily deduces the nature of Ultra Instinct and states that, with his evolved right eye having been further enhanced by his wish, he's able to observe blood flow and muscle movements to find all of Goku's weak points. Granola also senses that Goku is holding back and says that he'll kill Goku first before interrogating Vegeta for Frieza's location. Goku is naturally confused, but the ignorant and rage-filled Granola believes the Saiyan is playing dumb and tells him not to waste his time. Goku says that they were told that Granola was the bad guy, but stubborn as ever, Granola refuses to believe this and says the Saiyans will pay for their massacre of the Siri aliens. Enraged, the Siri alien powers up greatly and claims that he's superior to the Saiyans in every way. Goku, in response, turns into a Super Saiyan Blue and they clash once more, which creates powerful earthquakes felt by the Shigarians. Eventually, the battle progressed with Granola slowly getting an edge over Goku and pressures him enough to activate Autonomous Ultra Instinct in conjunction with Perfected Super Saiyan Blue. Eventually, Goku uses his instant Kamehameha while Granola struck him at his vital points at the same time, knocking both down. Granola taunts Goku that whatever transformation he uses, he still has openings his right eye will lock onto, to which Goku replied that his training is incomplete. Granola eventually says he's fed up of Goku using excuses and proclaiming that he'll kill both Saiyans by his hand, just like what they did to the Siri aliens before summoning an energy wave similar to Moro's technique from the ground beneath Goku, who escapes using instant transmission to Vegeta. He eventually battles Goku, who uses perfected Ultra Instinct and overpowers Granola, who couldn't notice his vital points in the form, while trying to convince him to train some time so he could spar some time, to which Granola reveals he split part of his power to save his strength for Frieza thus revealing he was a copy of Granola the whole time. Vegeta, who realized this and had located Granola's real body, informed Goku of this, catching him off guard. Granola then takes out Goku with a vital point attack, knocking him unconscious. Granola tried to finish him off only for Vegeta to intervene, who had already deduced the former was Siri Alien and proclaimed Granola will fight him next. Granola stated it didn't matter who fights him because he would win only to get angry after Vegeta taunts him over the fate of his race. Before Vegeta and Granola engage each other, Granola continues to mistake Vegeta's involvement with Frieza, prompting Vegeta to explain that he had abandoned the Frieza Force many years ago and has no involvement with the Tyrant since. Granola, adamant as ever, refuses to believe Vegeta, prompting Vegeta to transform into a Super Saiyan Blue evolved state and engage the Siri alien. He surrounds Granola and Hakai before destroying the rocks surrounding him. Unfazed, Granola taunts Vegeta and demonstrates his Hawkeye-like ability, destroying a giant rock behind Vegeta, sending him flying and towards Granola, sustaining a heavy blow. The two engage, with Vegeta narrowly avoiding Granola's energy barrages by hiding in a nearby lake. Unable to track him, Granola is assisted by Oatmeal and fires a bow and arrow of energy with the help of Oatmeal's aim assist, which Vegeta successfully defends against, but knocking him out of the lake. Granola approaches the Saiyan, expressing his surprise at how powerful he and Goku are. Vegeta, ignoring the obvious disadvantage he's in, continues to taunt Granola, confusing the Siri alien and prompting him to attack the Saiyan once more. Goku awakens from his injuries only to see the two fighting above him in the sky. The two engage in an aerial fight, causing Granola to accidentally destroy a section of a town. Vegeta taunts him again, enraging the Siri alien. Vegeta explains that his high battle power is only recent, pointing out the flaws in Granola's abilities and fighting expertise, surprising the Siri alien. Granola, still confident that his power is still enough to beat Vegeta, attacks him using sheer power. However, Vegeta counters this with his more experienced fighting expertise. Continuing to taunt the Siri alien, Vegeta gloats that the battle is only making him stronger, and regardless of how strong Granola is, it doesn't matter and that Vegeta will win due to his lack of training. Tired of the gloating and taunts, Granola pierces Vegeta's armor and stomach with a vital point attack, causing Vegeta to bleed profusely from his mouth and revert to his base form. Granola smiles in confidence, only for Vegeta to chuckle at him, stating that he hasn't felt this way in ages, enjoying every minute of this battle with no consequences at stake. Vegeta begins powering up, knocking Granola away. From afar, Goku senses Vegeta's key change to an unusual divine key. Granola retaliates by firing blasts at Vegeta, only for them to immediately disintegrate upon hitting the wall of energy coming from Vegeta. Shocking Granola. Vegeta, healed from his injuries, takes on a new form, to much of the shock and horror of Granola, stating that a god of destruction taught him that power derived from instinct is unbounded. Granola, unsure and confused by Vegeta's new power, is overwhelmed by the transformed Saiyan whose speed and might are increased exponentially. 
Vegeta pummels Granola with a Cerealian landing a massive blow to Vegeta's previously wounded stomach. However, Vegeta is completely unfazed. Confused by his drastic change in power, Granola questions what a god of destruction is, which Vegeta explains, causing Granola to wonder if Vegeta was granted this power by this deity. Vegeta explains that although he was taught the technique, the power and transformation Granola is experiencing is entirely Vegeta's. Vegeta further explains that their ongoing battle awakened the transformation, which Vegeta is grateful for. Adamant over the possibility of Vegeta surpassing him, Granola fires an energy wave at Vegeta, only for the wave to disintegrate upon contact with Vegeta. He fires a barrage of blasts at Vegeta, again to no effect. Becoming pressured once again, Granola forms an energy seal to protect himself. Insulted by Granola suggesting Vegeta dodge like Goku's Ultra Instinct, Vegeta states his technique is derived by Ego, not Instinct, dubbing the form as Ultra Ego. Vegeta shatters through Granola's barrier, kicking him in the face and sending him flying across the ruined city. Granola refuses to lose to Vegeta, saying that there's no way he's stronger than Frieza. Vegeta explains that the Saiyans were brought to near extinction by Frieza, who had destroyed planet Vegeta and not a meteor like everyone was told. Oatmeal then wonders if he and Granola were lied to. However, Granola is still determined to get his revenge. After unsuccessfully attacking Vegeta again, Oatmeal pleads with him to stop, as Goku and Vegeta were unaware of his race's extinction. Granola refuses, stating the Saiyans are responsible, removing his eyepiece and abandoning Oatmeal's assistance. Granola attacks Vegeta again, claiming he's in fact not used to his new power and abilities, and thus he too will learn and evolve in his battle against Vegeta, picking up a castle with telekinesis and hurling it at Vegeta, who tears apart the entire structure. Granola continues on to hurl even more pieces of the ruined city at Vegeta, then destroying it with his destructive powers, thereby destroying Vegeta's armor. Vegeta and Granola begin to exchange blows, with Vegeta sustaining damage that causes him to bleed from his chest. The two continue to exchange attacks, with Vegeta narrowly dodging a sniping attack before sending a powerful energy wave at the Serialian, knocking him away. Vegeta, realizing he's taking too much damage and becoming weakened, sees Granola charging another bow and arrow-like energy attack at him. In retaliation, Vegeta forms a giant sphere of destruction with the intent to finish off Granola and destroy the planet and launches at a defiant Granola who charges his attack with both his hands now. Vegeta realizes his left eye has changed, similar to his Serialian right eye, and shoots a precise attack at Vegeta's destruction sphere, destroying it and causing an explosion so massive it's felt by Goku and others around the planet. Vegeta, having been too close to the blast, is severely injured by the explosion of his sphere. He's confused by how Granola managed to destroy the attack, to which Granola thanks him for drawing out more of his own power. Off in the distance, the heaters observe the battle at hand, hoping Goku, Vegeta, and Granola kill each other from their battle. They're revealed to also have a dragon radar and plan on finding the Serialian Dragon Balls. Granola damages Vegeta out of his Ultra Ego state and prepares to kill him before Goku intervenes and punches him away. To his further shock, Vegeta hits Goku away due to wanting to fight Granola alone. After fighting them both, he realizes Goku can use the interval of his looking for their vitals and striking them to shift and avoid dangerous attacks from him. After Vegeta draws out his Ultra Ego form again and forces the battle to the city, Granola begs him to move it elsewhere to avoid civilian casualties. He's angered when Vegeta points out his hypocrisy and unnaturally angry behavior considering his species were peaceful. The Serialian forces the Saiyan Prince out of the city with a Kiai attack. Nearing his limit, Granola prepares to launch a full power energy blast that could kill Vegeta and himself. He's interrupted when Monaito arrives in a ship. Goku uses the opportunity to punch him, stopping his attack. To his shock, Monaito admits he lied about the Saiyans, and that one actually saved him and their species from extinction, and was a Saiyan named Bardock. Hearing Monaito's account of the Serialian genocide, Granola is shocked to learn that they were spared by a Saiyan. Monaito says that Goku bears a striking resemblance to Bardock. Goku is naturally confused and admits he knows little about Saiyans, having grown up on Earth. Vegeta reveals to Goku that Bardock was his father, shocking everyone present. Granola then angrily asks why his mother didn't survive. After Monaito reveals the rest of his story, Granola is enraged by the revelation that Alec was the one who murdered his mother, due to him serving the heaters for decades. He questions Monaito on not telling him this news, as the old Namekian states it was to protect him. Goku stops Granola from hurting the Namekian while Vegeta inquires if Bardock won against Gas. Monaito confirms this and declares Gas was powerful, but before he can finish, the sky turns dark. After the sky turns back, Granola and the others sense a massive power, which he recognizes as Gas's power, and panics. The heaters appear and confirm their deception to both parties before Maki sarcastically thanks Granola for his help. The heaters then unveil Gas, who has undergone a transformation and powers up because of the Dragon Ball, which Granola reveals was the source of his power. Gas proceeds to overwhelm Granola while revealing his dislike of him and why he was recruited in the first place. Gas nearly kills Granola, but Goku intervenes. 
Gast easily brushed him aside and traps him, allowing Granola to break free and demand to know why they spared him. Gast simply replies that his brother saw potential in Granola, while he didn't because he believed he was more than enough to represent his family and defeats the Serialian. After Monaito heals Goku, he takes over the fight against Gas, but is overwhelmed by the latter. Granola lays unconscious before Vegeta wakes him and tells him to eat a sensu bean, which will replenish his power. Granola is incredulous that Vegeta had this item and didn't use it. The Saiyan Prince replies that he would not take the cowardly way out to win, and tells Granola that if he wants to take revenge against those who ruined his life, he should do it by eating the bean and take it with his own hands. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Uh, Dragon Ball Super is cool. That's what I'll say, because I know people like Dragon Ball GT too, but Dragon Ball Super is pretty cool. Um, I'm Adrian, thanks for watching, I'm out.